Welcome to the West Cork Crochet Channel and welcome to the Cowl Neck Hound Tooth Poncho. This tutorial is given in support of the written pattern which is available to purchase. There should be a link in the description below. Yarn and hook information are on the way, in addition to which you will also need these things. If you like what you see, please tap the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. This project needs two contrasting colours. I've gone for steel grey and almond. This is by So Crafty picked it up in the Aldi supermarket chain. I don't know if you have an Aldi in your part of the world. It tells me it's a double knit yarn and it recommends I use a 4mm hook. I'm actually going to use a 6mm hook because I want plenty of movement in my fabric and the bigger the hook you use the more movement you create. So play around with your chosen yarn, see what size hook you can get away with, work up a little swatch, maybe 10 stitches, just a few rows in different hook sizes because you want as big a hook as you can get away with without resulting in a messy, loose finish. So with the 6mm hook and the darker of my two shades, I'm going to make a chain that measures twice the circumference of my neck plus 5cm. So measure around your neck, you want twice that measurement plus 5cm, that's how long your chain needs to be. Be sure to work an even number of chains and keep your chains nice and loose to make sure that you get that movement in your fabric at the end. We're going to join the chain at the end and the easiest way to do that is to make a short chain so I'm going to just chain 10 to begin with and then I'm going to release my hook from that working loop, keep the chain straight, insert my hook back into that first chain, back through the working loop and keep chaining. That way when you've finished your chain you can just whip it through for a slip stitch and you have no twist in your chain. I'm going to work my chain which is 80 and I'm going to come back. I have my 80 chains and I've pulled through my loop to join. Now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to stick a little marker into my chain one because I want to be able to easily find it when I get back around to the start. So mark that stitch and we're going to work the back bumps of our chain. So into every back bump I'm going to place a single crochet all the way around. So I have 80 stitches so I should have 80 single crochets. The working into the back bumps we get, in a minute I can show you, a nice edge. There we go. So we get the edge that is the chain, rather than just a loop that looks a bit untidy. So all the way along, if you lose your way and you, your work starts to twist, just check out your chain on the other side and make sure that that's straight and then you can't go wrong. So I'll work all the way around and I will be back to show you how we finish off the round. So that's the end of round one. I'm back at the start and I'm going to slip stitch into the marked stitch, the chain one from earlier. There we go, just give that a little tighten up because this is going to be the seam. So we want the seam to be nice and sort of neat and, and fairly tight. So chain one again, mark that one. And from here, we're gonna start with a griddle stitch which is alternating between single crochet and double crochet. We're going to start with a single and then we're going to make a double and then we go back with a single so and then the double yarn over first in you go pull through two pull through two and then back to a single so all the way around because you've got an even number of stitches you're going to end up with a double and I'll meet you there and show you what we do next. So here we are back at the start. I've ended on a double crochet as mentioned. Now we're going to change colour and we're going to close the round at the same time. So first thing we need to do is take our working yarn and just drop it in the front position. Then into our marked stitch, insert your hook, take up your second colour, your light colour, and 
and just pull through a loop. Oops, you don't want to go. There he goes. All right, and then pull it through your stitch. Now, just give that a tug, your, your grey colour, your, your darker colour. Give that a bit of a tighten up. And now we're on to the paler colour. So chain one. And mark that new stitch. Okay. Just make sure everything's nice and tightened up. And not the chain one, because you're going to need to slip stitch back into that at the end of this round. Okay, then we turn around. If you're ever stuck to, to know which direction you need to go into, the point of your last stitch points the direction you need to go into. So whichever way your arrow end is pointing, that's the direction we need to go into to change directions. So the last stitch we worked was a double crochet. The next stitch we're going to work is a single crochet. Always start your round with a single crochet. The griddle stitch here, it works by putting the single crochet on top of the doubles and the doubles on top of the singles. So, single and double. Just the same as we did before, just in this new shade. All the way around. And when you get back to the other end, I'll meet you up so we can do a colour change again. Okay, we're all the way around again and we're going to join and change colour. Drop your working yarn down in front. Your grey or your darker colour is now in the back, ready to continue because obviously we changed directions. So it went from front to back. Insert your hook into your marked stitch. Pull through your loop. All the way through your other stitch. Give that a tug. Chain one. Mark your chain. And then turn yourself around for the next round. Where we'll start again, single, double, single, double, all the way around. So we're just going to keep doing that until our cowl reaches about 25 centimetres. So keep doing your collar change. Remember to drop your yarn in front before you do your slip stitch with your new collar. And you'll be fine. So 25 centimetres, I'll let you know how many rows that turned out to be. And I come back. I have my 25 centimeters of work. Um, including the first single crochet row that we worked, I've worked 26 rows. And here's my seam, nice and straight down the middle. On the next row, we're going to keep the same griddle stitch going with a single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, but we're going to halve the number of stitches that we have. So Every two stitches is going to work together to form one stitch. So my single crochet and my double is going to be worked together all the way around. I'll show you how to do that. So I've already chained one and marked my chain stitch and turned around. As, as I mentioned before, your arrow points the way. So we start with a single crochet as normal, but what we're going to do is work the two together, as I said. So insert your hook, you pull up a loop, and you stop right there for the single crochet. We start on the double, so we yarn over, insert, pull through, pull through two, pull through three. And that works the single and the double together as one stitch. So one more time, pull through, yarn over for the double, pull through, pull through two, pull through three. And we've now got two stitches having worked four. Do that all the way around, and we'll have half the number of stitches. A 
after that round of decreases I now have 40 stitches where I had 80. I've already worked my colour change and chained one and marked the stitch. So flip around and we're going to just work a regular row, no more decreases, just to even out our stitches because you'll see they get a little bit stretched from the decreases. So we just need to even them out with a regular round. So single double still all the way around and I'll meet you at the other side. Next we need to place some stitch markers. So take your stitch count around the top there, divide it by six, round it up or down to your nearest whole number. That whole number is where your stitch marker will go across from the centre seam. So for me that worked out to be six stitches and then the stitch marker into the seventh. So over the other side of the seam I count six stitches and I add my stitch marker into the seventh. And then I've done the same on the other side, just find the centre point and count six across. So there's my centre, one, two, three, four, five, six, put it into the seventh, one, two, three, four, five, six, add it into the seventh. So I have for my numbers, I have 12 across the back, 12 across the front, and six on either side. And obviously the four marked stitches, so that's my 40 stitches. So, flipping round, we start the next round as normal. So, we're going to work a single. Whoops, if I can get into the stitch. And then a double. And in the usual way, single, double until I get to that first stitch that I've marked. And here I am. So, I just worked a double. And what we're going to do, is we're going to keep the griddle stitch pattern going. We don't alternate from that at all. It's always going to be single, double, single, double, single, double. But into each marked stitch, we're going to work three stitches. So as I've just ended on a double, I need to work single, double, single. If you've ended on a single here, you need to work double, single, double. Okay, so for me, as I said, single, double, single. Here we go. And I'm going to take my stitch marker and put it into the, th the second stitch of that little cluster. That's the new marked stitch. So, I just worked single, double, single, so my next stitch is a double. And do the same thing all the way around to the next marked stitch. Oh, and here I am. So I've just finished on a single, so I need to work double, single, double into this marked stitch. Get that out of the way. Double, single, and then the other double. Mark your centre stitch. Carry on with the next one being a single. And just work that all the way around. And this is actually the new pattern for some time to come. So every time you reach your marked stitch, you put three stitches in, and then you just trot along as normal for the rest of the round with your alternating stitches. Keep doing that in rounds until you get the length that you want. So it looks after that first round. And what you'll notice as you keep going with the rounds is that these points, these four points, it will start to extend out and fan out. So keep going, keep going with your alternating stitches, single, double, single, double, three into your mark, and I'll meet you back when we've got the length we want. Some time later, I've now finished 46 rounds working in squares around the, um, well, starting from the collar and working out from there. That measures... 48 centimetres roughly 
I can't get it all on camera because it won't fit in the frame. I hope you can see. I folded it in half as though it would be worn. Uh, this is the cowl collar. This is the shoulder edge. And I've got the seam going down the middle. And here we have the increases on one of the four corners where it comes out. Um, I ended up finishing on a dark row because I wanted to mirror what I've done up here when we started with the collar. So before I started that final dark row, I just tied off the pale colour and started with the dark row and then, so still alternating single, double, single, double. And then I finished off with a single crochet row, so no more alternating, just the single crochet for that final round. So basically two end rounds in the dark colour and alternate, alternating single, double, single, double, and then just a single crochet round. I'm next going to work an edging round just to close off these loops. I'm going to work that in a reverse single crochet. The difference between the reverse and the regular single crochet is instead of going in this direction, as we normally would for a regular single crochet, we're going to go in this direction, a reverse single crochet. So it's very much the same except all we do is we come at it from this side. So we still go through two loops. We still pull through a loop and we still pull through the two loops. We're just approaching it from this side and what it does is it wraps the loops up in a loop. So it just kind of closes off the edge there. So do this all the way down this side and we'll meet up at the end at the corner and work that together. That's the first section of the single reverse single crochet. I hope you can see it just wraps the edge up nicely. Well, I think it looks nice anyway. If you don't like it, then don't do it. Or if you hate working the stitch, then don't work the stitch. Just leave it as is with the original stitch edge. So I'm here at the corner, if you are still with me. And what, where well, we've worked into the center stitch with three stitches before now, just going to go around so I'm not going to do any more increases just going to go one stitch in each and round that corner Oops. potentially there we go and come out the other side before I start working up the next side with the finishing edge I'm just going to show you where I'm going to stop so here's the top of that edge where I've marked the very top two stitches because obviously we started with an even number so we still have an even number as should you and I've left well I've marked out a gap for my arm to come through so for me that was seven stitches down either side so one two three four five six seven I've marked the eighth stitch on both sides and I'm also going to join up for another ten stitches so I've counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and into the 10th stitch on both sides. I've marked that as well. So obviously leave enough room for your hand, not for my hand, um, and just put your markers in. I'm going to work from the corner up to the first stitch marker and I'll show you what I'm going to do there. And I'm here at the marked stitch, the first of the 10 that I marked off to join up. I'm going to join these two sides. Now, if you haven't noticed already, this is actually reversible. Um, on one side, the grey, the dark colour looks prominent, and on the other side, the pale colour looks prominent. So you can actually wear it in either direction, either inside out or right side out, whichever side out you prefer. So I want to make sure when I join up here that it looks the same on both sides. For these next 10 stitches, I'm going to continue with the reverse single crochet. But we have the two loops on this side and the two loops on this side. I'm going to take, oops, I've let myself go there, the exterior loop, the one nearest to me on this side, the exterior loop, the one furthest away from me on this side. I'm going to do the single crochet, sorry, the reverse single crochet as normal. So again, the, of the two loops on this side, the one nearest to me, the one furthest away from me on the other side and just do your reverse single crochet as normal. That way we have the two sort of internal loops to join up 
on the other side and we'll have an identical seam. Just make sure you're grabbing the right loop otherwise you'll have nothing to go into when you come to the other side. So outside loops only. Up to your next stitch marker. So the next two stitches are the stitches that I marked. I'm going to go through both loops on both sides and I'm going to pull through a slip knot and I'm going to pull that tight. Make sure at this point that your hand goes through this hole or you're going to be in trouble later. I've now switched to a hook size that's two millimetres smaller than the one I was previously working with. So I was on a six. I'm now going to a four millimetre. From right where I slip stitched into that last stitch, I've made a chain that reaches from where my poncho leaves me on the arm to the to my hand here, for where I want my cuff to go. I've chained 20. It measures about 14 centimetres. It will contract a little bit because we're going to stretch it widthways when it's being worn. So I've done my 20 chains here already, just literally where I left off. Chain another one to turn, and I'm going to work back down the chain with single crochet. missing the turning chain so from the second loop from my hook I'm going to single crochet all the way back down to the bottom I've worked down to the end of my chain still got my 20 stitches make sure you count them so you don't miss any normally when we're making a cuff and then attaching it to an opening We'd slip stitch into these stitches along the edge, the last stitches that you've worked. These stitches are too big, so if I did that, they'd be gaping holes. So I'm not going to do that, I don't want the gaping holes. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to pick up these loops here between the two stitches. So we've got one, two, just between those, there's like a little horseshoe loop there in each case in between the stitches. So I'm going to slip stitch into those. To alleviate gaps at the beginning, I'm going to slip stitch first into the stitch we've just worked. So that's number one, where we just worked out of. Number two here, the next one along. And then the third one here. And then I'm going to turn the work around and I'm going to work back up with back loop single crochets. The first three from the hook are the slip stitches we just worked. So we're starting from here. So one, two, three, into the fourth and into the back loop of that fourth stitch, single crochet. And then the same all the way up, back loops only, chain one at the end, work back down, back loops only, skipping that turn chain. Again, count your stitches to make sure you pick them all up and we'll slip stitch again at the base together. I'm back at the base and again I'm going to slip stitch. So first I'm going to slip stitch into the one I just slip stitched into, again alleviating the gaps. So that's one and then two new ones. So there's the first new one and the second new one. And then I'm going to turn around again. Fourth loop from the hook. One, two, three, fourth one. Back loop only. Single crochet all the way back up your new section. Chain one. Come back down. And you're going to slip stitch into the base into the sacks in exactly the same way. Keep repeating that until you get to the stitch marker that marks the halfway point. At the end of the first half of my cuff, I have an uneven number of stitches to slip stitch into. So I wasn't able to slip stitch three times into the base here as we have been doing. So I went up and down and then I just slip stitched twice. So the old stitch and then the new one, which is absolutely fine. Before we work back up to the next row, you need to try this on and just find out a mark where your thumb starts and finishes along this length. 
So here I've marked where my thumb goes. Everybody's is going to be different. It depends on your hook size, your yarn choice, how far along you worked up your arm with your poncho. So measure it out, mark the spot. I've only slip stitched twice last time, so I've only got to skip the first two stitches going back up. And I'm going to go back loop single crochet as before, all the way up to the stitch that I've marked first. So the last one. And here's the marked stitch. So I just take that out. And I'm going to do a full regular single crochet through both loops. Whoops, there you go. Then I'm going to chain eight. Which corresponds with the gap that I've marked out for the thumb. So I skip the eight. And then I'm going to go make a full single crochet again through both loops into the ninth stitch get rid of that and then just back loop to the end and there we have a little gap I've already chained one and flipped around on off camera so here I am going back down having just created the loop. So for me I need to work four back loop single crochets before I come to my chain so whatever your numbers are work your back loop single crochet and I'm here at my chain. I'm going to flip the chain and I'm going to work into the back loops for my eight stitches along my chain. At the end of the chain we come back to the main body. Just going to go into the back loops again for the next eight. So that's the thumb hole sorted. We're back onto just regular stitches on the cuff. So we slip stitch as we did before up the first side into that last stitch again and into two fresh ones. And we go back to back loop single crochet up and down slip stitching into the base until we get round to the start when we need to join up the two sides. After the final row on the second side I'm again one slip stitch short because I've still got my uneven numbers so again I just slip stitch twice as opposed to three times. I'm also going to slip stitch into the start here just anywhere poke through pull up a slip stitch just to secure it to the start as well and then we're just going to join up these two sides to finish the cuff. So on this side we have the remaining loops of our starting chain. On this side is the row we've just finished, so we've got two loops. Going to the first of your start chain loops. So these along the back here and then pick up that's your, that's your slip stitch um, the back loop from your first stitch that you've just finished the row you just finished and slip stitch through there so next one is the last loop from your start chain back loop from your last row slip stitch just do that all the way along. Till you get to the end. When you get to the end, just chain one to secure and cut your yarn. Here I am at the end. Chain one. Put it all the way through. Pull it tight. You just have to weave this end in. So because we've joined the two sides with the slip stitch going from the base to the end there, we've basically continued the pattern 
with a back loop, single crochet. You can see it looks like it's just a continuation of the pattern. And also when you turn it inside out, if you're going to wear it in the other direction, the other way around, same thing applies, just the pattern continues right across. That said, we do need to turn it inside out. Whoops. Because we're going to reattach our yarn here so that we can seam the other side as we did here. If you remember, when I joined up the two sides earlier, I worked reverse single crochet into the exterior loops only on both sides. And then into the 10th stitch, I worked through both loops on both sides. So as we turn over, that 10th stitch is no longer available. But what we do have is the nine sets of internal or interior loops that I'm now going to reverse single crochet through to recreate the look that we have on the other side. Again, to make sure that it can be worn in either direction and you get the same look. So, insert your hook, slip stitch goes on, pull through, chain one to secure, Just tighten that up. I'm ready to go. And then I've just spun myself around off camera to make sure that I'm in the right direction for the reverse single crochet. Actually, I'm just going to pull through my tail end here because I'm going to work it in as I go down. If you just slot it down between those two loops, you can just work it in at the same time. Don't have to, it's just one thing less to do at the end. Right, so reverse single crochet through the two loops. Pull through a loop, pull through your loop. Be that again because I fell off there. Just mind the tail end. Through your loops, through there, pull through. Work that all the way down your nine stitches, as it is in this instance. And you'll have a nice seam, exactly the same as we did on the other side. the nine worked, reverse single crochets, I'm back onto the edge, I'm just going to follow on and keep going all the way down this edge. The first stitch, I'm just actually going to go through here, the other side, as well as the first stitch. So, just through the whole thing on this side, through your two loops on your edge side, and just reverse single crochet around the whole thing. And then just as normal, just keep going down this whole edge, reverse single crochet. Work around your corner, one stitch in each, no increases. Keep going all the way along until you get to the other side where you'll work the same setup that you worked for the first cuff, exactly the same way. Then you'll start back on the other side, as we've done here, exactly the same way, and work your way all the way around back to the finish. I've edged all the way around, I've added two cuffs, and I'm back here at my chain one space. I'm going to add a reverse single crochet into the chain one space, just to finish that off. Then I'm just going to go through the first of my reverse single crochet and I'm going to pull through a slip knot just to finish that off. Cut your yarn, pull it through, weave it in. We're all done. And that brings us back to me and my artful slow motion twirl. <laughs> I hope you found the video helpful and I really hope you go on and make one of your own. 
As I said way back at the start, if you like what you see, do tap the like button. If you want to see more, please hit the subscribe and the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching today.